An important part of the theremin is the pitch reference oscillator, which is used alongside the pitch variable oscillator to generate the actual sound of the theremin. Let's look at the schematic of this oscillator and then let's build it and tune it. Hi there! I am Carlo Carrano and this is Electronics Engineering Made Easy. The pitch reference oscillator works in the LF band, also known as low frequency band. This is a radio frequency normally used for navigation and for RFID devices, like those in cell phones and some credit cards. The theremin uses this same LF radio band, and in particular it works at around 172 kHz. The oscillator that I decided to use for this project is a so-called tuned amplifier oscillator. There is a resonator tank made up by L1, C4, C6 and C7 that resonates at the frequency we need, and there is a transistor that works as an amplifier to restore the energy lost by the resonator tank due to its parasitic resistances, especially the one on the inductor. Basically, the transistor will inject new energy in the resonator tank at every half cycle, allowing the resonator to sustain the oscillation indefinitely. A potentiometer RV1 allows us to fine-tune the polarization of the transistor, so that we can increase and decrease its gain in a small range. This adjustment is necessary to manipulate the sensitivity of the pitch when the player moves its hand around the pitch antenna. The other components in this circuit are needed to correctly polarize the transistor. This is done through the resistors R2, R3, R5, R1, and R4, and to filter the polarization voltage in all the places where we want a constant voltage. This is done by the capacitors C2, C3, C8, and C1. Capacitors C5 is used to help initiate the oscillation when the 12 volt power supply is applied to the circuit. And finally, the resistor R6 is used to adjust the output impedance of the oscillator. In fact, without this resistor, the load of the next stage of the circuit, which is the mixer that adds up the signal of this oscillator to the one of the pitch variable oscillator, could drain enough power to stop the oscillation altogether. Let's now take a look at the implementation of this oscillator. To save some time, I already built the circuit on this breadboard. You can see here the transistor, which is here in the circuit, and, uh, and then uh, there is the resonation tank over here, L1 and this capacitor and two variable capacitors and they are right here, this is the inductor L1 and then the capacitor and the two variable capacitors. Then we have the polarization circuit here, 150k, 33k, this other resistor, the potentiometer and this capacitor. And they are here, so these are all connected to the base. So let's see, on the base we have the resistor that goes to the potentiometer, the potentiometer connected to the negative rail and to the positive rail, a capacitor across the, the end of the potentiometer, and then another two resistors here, one this and the other one hidden behind here, and these are the two resistors up here. Then on the emitter we have another resistor and another capacitor, and they are right here, the resistor and the capacitor. And then we have uh, another capacitor which is between connected between collector and emitter of uh, the transistor, and that is basically this one, which is connected between the emitter here and the collector over here. And uh, Finally, we have another capacitor here, 33 nanofarad, between this point above the inductor L1 and the negative rail, and it's right here. The resistor, the, the capacitor, uh, that goes to the negative rail. There is a 1K 
resistor, which is right here. And finally, I have applied the two test points, one here and one here, to be able to connect easily the oscilloscope. So we can tune this circuit and see if it works correctly also. So let's do that. Let's put the circuit over here. Let's power it up using this, which is connected to the 12 volt power supply. I'm going to connect this over here with a negative and a positive correctly connected to the appropriate rails. And then the oscilloscope here, the negative, the, the common, and this is the actual output of the oscillator. So let's see on the oscilloscope how this looks like. Here it is. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. So as you can see, this circuit provides a very, very clean sine wave. And we can read over here the frequency of this sine wave. We said before that we need this oscillator to work at 172 kilohertz. Right now it's too low, so we will need to act on the variable capacitors and see if we can adjust the frequency with those, this one and this one. So while I adjust the capacitors, let's monitor the frequency on the oscilloscope and let's see if we can reach the 172 kilohertz that we are looking for. So this is the first uh, variable capacitor. I, you see that I can increase the frequency a little bit. 146, 147. Okay, I think I reached the maximum with this variable capacitor. So let me act now on the other one. And this way is decreasing, so rotating the other way around. Uh, so we are already at the maximum here. So it looks like that the choice that I made when I calculated the capacitor of the resonant circuit, in particular for this one, was not really appropriate. It seems like 400 picofarad is too much. We need to reduce it a little bit in order to increase the frequency to 172 kilohertz. It's about 30 kilohertz different, so it's a big, big amount of change. Uh, let me try to put here, instead of a 400 picofarad, a 100 picofarad. And let's see if that works better. I'm going to remove the 400 picofarad capacitor. And I will put instead a 100 picofarad capacitor. Okay, let's check out now the frequency. Oh, look at that. We're almost there. Right now, we, can we see about... Uh, let me zoom in here, 172.278 kilohertz, about. So let's see if we can tune it exactly to 172 kilohertz, still acting on the variable capacitors. Uh, yes, I think uh, with a little patience I can do it. Let me try with the other one. This is very, very small movements of the capacitor. I think we are almost there. I think we are we can be kind of happy this way. And the circuit seems to work exactly as we expected. Now, let's look at one last thing. And this last thing is basically this potentiometer. Let's look at the schematics again. The potentiometer here, basically what does, changes a little bit the voltage of this point when, move, when, when it's moved from the upper position to the down position. And this basically changes a little bit the polarization of this transistor. But changing the polarization of the transistor changes a little bit the internal capacity of the transistor itself to the transistor junction between collector and base. And this affects in basically the, the frequency of the, of the oscillator because this capacitor goes somehow in parallel to the others that are the, or, over there already. And this actually is the reason why I couldn't calculate exactly this capacitor over here, because I didn't know exactly what the, cap the internal capacity of the transistor would be. Apparently, I consider it being too low, and it's really is not, it's a, it's a little higher. And then I had to lower this, this one. Actually, at this point, we can definitely change this number and put it to 100 picofarad, which is the one that we actually put in. So again, when I move... Uh, this potentiometer, I change the polarization, change the internal capacity of the transistor, and change the frequency. So basically, I should see, when I move this potentiometer, the frequency going a little up and down on the oscilloscope. Let's see if that is true, and if the range is exactly what we wanted, which is about a few hundred hertz in one direction and another. So let's concentrate on the frequency. 
Now I'm moving the potentiometer in one direction. And see the frequency is increased a little bit. Now I'll move it in the opposite direction. And there you go, this decreases. This is exactly the use that we wanted to do with this potentiometer. We wanted to be able to change the frequency a little bit up and down of the pitch reference oscillator so that to tune the theremin to the person that is actually playing it. So now that we are sure that all the components are exactly what they are supposed to be to make the theremin work correctly, let's uh, transport this circuit to the actual board that will host the whole theremin. And to do, to do so, I will use this circuit, perf board. And then once it is built over here, we will test it again one more time and we will tune once and for all the two variable capacitors to have the 172 kilohertz when the potentiometer is exactly in midway. So let's do that. Let's start building this circuit. And finally, here is the computer circuit. Just one little thing different from what we saw before. I had to modify the capacitor over here and put one of 260 picofarads. This is because the parasitic capacitance of the breadboard is higher than the parasitic capacitance of this perf board. And so the circuit was oscillating at a frequency that was too high for what we need. So increasing the capacity a little bit allowed me to get back to the correct range that we need for the theremin. So now let's do the final adjustments. So let's power up the oscillator here. Negative voltage over here, ground, and positive over here. And the oscilloscope will go over here to ground and to this test point over here. So let's look at the oscilloscope now. Let's enlarge a little bit. So you can see how it's working quite good. The sine wave is perfectly shaped. There are no problem with it. Let's make the final adjustments. So I'm gonna do the final adjustments with the two variable capacitors until we reach the 172 kilohertz that we require. So we have to go up a little bit. Okay, almost there. There we go. A little fine adjustment. And there we are. Let's check that with a potentiometer we can go up and down from this central frequency. So in one direction we go down to 71.8 kilohertz. In the other direction we go up to 172.14 kilohertz. Okay, I think for now we can be satisfied. Further adjustments will be done once the whole theremin is uh, mounted. So that's it for now. Next time we will work on another piece of the theremin.